Now let's see this question. Which of the following argument is invalid? Now this argument is given and we are supposed to find out whether it is invalid, valid or invalid. Now, what are the premises given here? A or B? And this. And negation D. Now let's see what are the rules of inferences we could use. So now, if you remember the rules of inferences, you can directly use them. If you don't remember the rules of inferences, then also you can do it, right? So one way of, see, one simple way of solving this one is, you try to construct the truth table. You apply the AND to all these premises and you construct the truth, tab, truth table for this and you find out the truth values for it. Now, whatever truth values you get here, C also you are, you are supposed to get the same truth values. In that case, you can say that, you know, both are actually valid. This is a valid argument. If you don't, if you are not able to do that, generally that is a time taking process. Constructing the truth table means as the number of variables here increase, constructing the truth table is very difficult. So if you can remember the rules of inference, that is that is nice. Now even here also, if you don't remember the rules of inference, sometimes you can directly use your intuition and you know get to it. So see this, this is nothing but negation A or D. Now here they are saying that already D is false, isn't it? Negation D is true means D is false. And if D is false, if this entire thing has to be true, definitely negation A has to be true, isn't it? Therefore, from these two, you can write that negation A is the, uh, you know, conclusion, isn't it? From these two premises, negation A is the conclusion. Now, this one is also called as modest tolerance. If you can directly do it, other fine. Otherwise, modest tolerance is the rule that I applied here. You need not uh, by heart the names of the rules as long as you know what the result is. Okay, just for your information, I'm saying it is modest tolerance. And now you know that negation A is true. So negation A is true means A is false. Now A is false, and this entire thing is true. When will this be true? Only when B is true. Therefore, from these two, you can d draw the conclusion that B is true. Getting this? Now, what is the rule that I have applied here? Disjunctive syllogism right so name is not important if you can un remember understand this procedure and now from these two b implies c is given and then b is given definitely you can conclude c right so what is this rule modus ponens right from this one and b if i combine these two i am going to get conclusion as c therefore overall we got the conclusion as c and so this is a valid argument okay so this is actually valid argument but then we are supposed to find out invalid argument okay now let's look at option 2, option B here. Negation A, the premises given are this. So they are actually joined by the uh, conjunction, but you can separate them and you can work on it. Not a problem. Negation A implies negation C. Negation D, A implies E, C or D. Okay. So now one thing you can do is, this one you can replace it with the contrapositive of it. It will make the simplifications easy. So you could write it as C derives, sorry, C implies A. Now, if you observe this one, this how I am able to write it is, uh, the contrapositive and this one both will be equivalent. That is, I am able to write it. So now you don't have this, you just have this one. Okay. Now, you can use these two and according to the disjunctive syllogism, right you can say c isn't it so how because since already d is known to be false if this one has to be true c has to be true negation d is true means d is false if d is false then if this entire thing has to be true then definitely c has to be true that is why i'm writing c right okay now if you see these two you can apply transitivity rule here right c c to a is there and then a to E is there. Therefore, we can apply the transitivity rule here, right? So, C implies A and A implies uh, E is going to give us C implies E, right? And now you can combine these two finally, mod exponents. Now, by using mod exponents, we can say E is the conclusion, right? And yes, E is the conclusion given there. Therefore, this is also valid. Now, we shall see the next options. Now, one thing if you observe in option B, if you are using this representation, you have to use just implies, not tautological, uh, tautological implication. Okay, that is that is one thing. Now, if you observe the next one, A 
A implies DRC, B implies negation A is given there. And now they are asking whether the confusion is C, whether it is valid or not. So let's see, let's check whether it is valid or not. I'll, I'll simply write it this way. This is one of the premise given. And other premise given is A. And the other premise given is A implies B or C. Now I am going to use the same premise two times here. See this. Now with A and this one, if you combine these two by mod exponents, you are going to get B or C, right? Now, if I combine these two by modus tollens, you are going to get negation B, right? And if I combine these two by disjunctive syllogism, you are going to get C, right? And so, we got the valid, I mean, you know, from this uh, premises, we got this uh, conclusion and the given argument is valid, right? So, definitely this is valid, okay? Now let's see option D. So we have A or B and then negation C. Now you can use these two premises and you can conclude negation B by modest tolerance, right? And now if you observe these two, it is disjunctive, you know, uh, syllogism. Now if you observe it, they are saying that negation B is, and this is what we got, negation B is true, which means B is false. If B is false and if this thing is true, then only possible way is A has to be true, right? Therefore, the conclusion you might get is A according to this uh, disjunctive syllogism, but then they have given the conclusion as negation A. So definitely this is not valid, right? So the option is this, which of the following is valid means this is the option, okay? Now, one other way of checking whether the given uh, argument is valid or not is, generally arguments will be given in this form, right? So, you will have a set of premises, let us say uh, P is the set of all premises and then you are going to get uh, Q, that is the conclusion. Now, this is always going to be a tautology. Tautology means whatever P and Q uh, variables they contain, whatever two, two values you give, always P implies Q should always give you true right this is what is tautology right now if you want to check whether an argument is valid or not you try to get a case where it will not be a tautology right which means uh, let us say this is all set of premises isn't it and this is the conclusion now it is in the form of p implies q right now when will this p implies q be false only in the condition where this is true and this is false isn't it in that case it is going to be uh, you know false now we have to get at least one you know generally this is tautology which means there should not be any inputs in such a way that you get true here and you get false here but if you can find out any such input then you can say that this is not valid see in the earlier method if you are able to do it it is fine otherwise i'm just trying to tell you a shortcut but in order to apply this shortcut you might have to think a bit and also you need to practice a lot so if you are not able to get it leave it otherwise just look at this one now you have to get here conclusion as false if i have to get conclusion as false then what should be the truth value for i mean i'm choosing the uh, truth values for a b c in such a way that i get conclusion as false and this entire thing is true if i get that case i can say that this is not valid right now if i have to get here as false then definitely a has to be true if a is true then definitely this one is going to be false now let's think about how to set b and c in such a way that you know this entire thing is going to be true now one way is if this entire thing has to be true since a is true uh, even if b is false this entire thing is true right and since b is false c has to be false here right and also c has to be false here right so now by using this input true false false to this you will be getting a case where P is going to be true and Q is going to be false. Now true implies false is false. But actually if it is a valid argument you are supposed to get a tautology. You are not, never supposed to get this case. Right. So that is how you can conclude that it is invalid. If you are not able to get it go with the standard method by using the rules of inferences. Okay. Hi. If you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in India. I will give you all the reasons. So first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and IITs 
universities better than IITs. They have very good acceptance rate, like 30 percent, 40 percent. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5 percent. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177, and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance. And GRE and English test assistance. And education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews, and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the more visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia. Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.